Okay, starting off today's show, I want to talk a little bit about the Cleveland Browns and what exactly this season means for them. And when you look at Cleveland going into last season, the the expectations were pretty high. There were a lot of people that did expect the Cleveland Browns to not only make the playoffs, but do big things. As you as you saw, Baker Mayfield during his rookie season was very good. They brought in Odell Beckham, brought back Jarvis Landry. Uh, Nick Chubb has turned into one of the more productive running backs in the National Football League. He is really good. You know the talent they have all over the defense defensive side of the ball. So going into last uh, season, the expectations for this Cleveland Browns team were pretty high. However, the season didn't end up well. They ended up going 6-10. and 10. And when I look at this upcoming 2020 season for the Cleveland Browns, I think there are a lot of things that really stand out in terms of what exactly can this team accomplish going into this season. Uh, There are a couple new things that stand out. Number one, um, the two main problems for this Cleveland Brown team last year were the offensive line and the coach. And I do think when you look at the 2020 uh, Cleveland Browns, they have done a really good job addressing both units on their team. When you look at the fact that they signed Jack Conklin, the tackle from the Tennessee Titans, he should step in right away and start at one of the tackles. And also uh, uh, Jedrick Wills, the left tackle from Alabama, he should step in right away. And both those guys should really uh, help improve the Cleveland Browns offensive line. Also, Freddie Kitchens. I totally understand that Freddie Kitchens was just not a very good football coach, and I do think he is one of the main people to blame as to why the Cleveland Browns were such a bad team last year, and I do think Jimmy Haslam and GM Andrew Berry definitely made the right decision deciding to move on from Freddie Kitchens and bring in new head coach uh, Kevin Stefanski. But when I look at this upcoming season for the Cleveland Browns, I have a feeling that this really could be now or never. And I'll tell you what exactly I mean by that is last year, the Cleveland Browns brought in all these different personalities, all these guys like Baker Mayfield, Jarvis Landry, Odell Beckham, Kareem Hunt, they have Nick Chubb. And unfortunately, they just weren't really able to win that many games. But with the talent on this team, they should be able to be pretty solid. Also, they I, I, besides drafting uh, Wills, I like what they did with their draft, bringing in Grant Delpit uh, as well to help in the secondary. So the bottom line is, with Kevin Stefanski, Baker Mayfield, Odell Beckham leading the way, it is now or never for the Cleveland Browns. I think if the Cleveland Browns do not make the playoffs this upcoming season, they should really consider you know changing something big, whether it's trading Odell Beckham, and we know OBJ's Uh, name has been involved in trade rumors for a while. Maybe it's moving on from quarterback. You know, Baker Mayfield has had a very interesting career. We know that the first couple of years of his college career just purely based on physical measurements, and we know that's not always a big thing. You know, that's not always the most accurate thing, I should say, when it comes to judging a quarterback. But at the same time, Baker Mayfield, uh, his stock really did rise during his last year at Oklahoma in terms of his NFL prospect ability. People were really saying that um, uh, if he is the number one overall pick, it would kind of be risky. And his name wasn't even mentioned in terms of who can be the next number one overall pick in the NFL until late, uh, during his college career. And probably even after that, I would say probably like right before that draft and the Browns end up taking him number one overall over many other quarterbacks that have shown they've had their moments so far in their NFL career, like Sam Darnold, like Josh Allen. And I do think if Baker Mayfield has, you know, a bad season, I don't want to say the Browns should move on from him at quarterback, but they should maybe start to look in another direction. However, I do think one other key thing for the 2020 Cleveland Browns is Baker Mayfield has to be on the field for all 16 games. I think no matter how good or bad your team is, Kevin Stefanski and the GM Andrew Berry, they need to see, okay, is Baker Mayfield the right guy for this job? And he could be, can could he be the guy that could ultimately lead us to a Super Bowl championship? And that is what our goal in Cleveland has been for such a long time. But now I just think the Browns and Baker Mayfield are kind of out of excuses. When you look at this Cleveland team, right, they improved their offensive line, which last year was one of their biggest weaknesses and could have been, if you ask like Baker, why did you play so bad? He could say, all right, my offensive line wasn't great. It was one of the worst units in the whole National Football League. And I understand, you know, what he was saying. You also look at coaching. Freddie Kitchens was just obviously not the answer. I understand Baker Mayfield did have some success with him as his offensive coordinator in his rookie season when Hugh Jackson was still the head coach. But at the same time, Freddie Kitchens literally cost the Browns games last year. You remember that game against the Rams when it was fourth and nine and he ran a 
draw play with Nick Chubb. I still don't know why he would ever do that. You remember after the whole Miles Garrett situation went down, Freddie Kitchens was caught on uh, in a picture wearing a, a Mason started it shirt. That is something that an NFL head coach should never be doing. And when you look at Odell's big personality, uh, you know, it didn't really work out with him last year. And the offensive line is much improved. You know, that's the bottom line. The main two problems in Cleveland last year were incompetent coaching and incompetent offensive line play, as well as incompetent quarterback play. Well, now they think they have the head coach in Kevin Stefanski, who in Minnesota, like he was pretty solid, uh, did a, had a really nice season directing Kirk Cousins and, uh, uh, you know, making the playoffs with that Minnesota Viking team, you, I feel like you see a lot of times, right, in the NFL during coaching searches, candidates, especially recently, get jobs that kind of just hit the the NFL fan out of nowhere that not a lot of people really expected. I think this year, the main example of that could have been Joe Judge going to the New York Giants. That was a name that in terms of head coaches and possibly getting hired, that's a name that no one really had on their possible list. But at the same time, um, with the Cleveland Browns, this isn't the Tennessee Titans hire, uh, you know, Matt LaFleur going from the Green Bay Packers, or from the Tennessee Titans to the Green Bay Packers. I think a big reason as to why Matt LaFleur got that job is because everyone is just looking for the next Sean McVay, and everyone is looking for that next young coach that's a great offensive genius, even though it has worked out for the most part so far. I think you could say the same thing about Cliff Kingsbury in Arizona. But when you look at Kevin Stefanski, I think he was a guy that really deserved an NFL job because he did a really nice job leading Kirk Cousins and that Minnesota Viking offense last year, leading them to the playoffs, leading them to that big postseason win over Drew Brees and the New Orleans Saints. And, you know, it's 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 very interesting that you have a team that is on this trajectory that the Cleveland Browns is. A lot of times I've spoken about it on the show, right? Whether it's been the Detroit Lions, whether it's been the LA Chargers, in terms of teams that, you know, Really, some aspects of their team are ready to win right now, but other aspects of their team just really aren't. It's hard to have a first-year head coach come in right away and say, all right, you, we really think we need to make the playoffs in year one, or else this thing could just be, um, you know, just done with and the you know it'll just blow up in their face um it's gonna be interesting to see how exactly Kevin Stefanski the new head coach really responds to that because Kevin Stefanski has never coached an NFL game in his life and going into last season Freddie Kitchens had he was the interim coach for the Cleveland Browns uh Baker's rookie season and Freddie really failed when you look at Kevin Stefanski and the Cleveland Browns, this is going to be a guy that has never coached an NFL game before in his life, and he has to deal with the personalities of Baker Mayfield, Odell Beckham, Jarvis Landry, Miles Garrett, guys that the bottom line is couldn't mesh and couldn't win games last year. So Kevin Stefanski is really going to have to prove that he is a better coach than Freddie Kitchens. And I understand it isn't that hard to say, okay, I'm a better football coach than Freddie Kitchens, because Freddie Kitchens was just god-awful last year in Cleveland, and he was once again again, the reason why I feel like that team lost so many games. But at the same time, um, you know, the, he's given a lot of talent and the excuses aren't there for Baker Mayfield. And even though it is his first year, I, it, it's hard for me to generate excuses for Kevin Stefanski. They also bring in Austin Hooper, the tight end from the Atlanta Falcons, who is now the highest paid tight end in the whole National Football League. They have some younger guys on defense that I like. They also lose um, a couple linebackers, Kirksey and Schobert. I think both those guys are going to be big losses. But at the same time, that defense still should hopefully have have enough talent to win as many games as possible. When you look at Miles Garrett, Denzel Ward, um, you know, they bring in Grant Delpit, the safety from LSU. They also still have Greedy Williams, who they drafted last year. There is no reason as to why this Cleveland Brown team shouldn't be a playoff team based on their talent. But I'm very fascinated to see what exactly they do if they don't make the playoffs and what exactly their future holds if this season doesn't really go uh, that successfully or if they go 8-8 eight and eight and miss the playoffs, let's say, by half, a, by half a game. Because we all know this Cleveland Brown team is just so desperate to win. They haven't won in such a long time. And they took this quarterback, Baker Mayfield, with the number one overall pick in order for him to be the guy to lead them to the promised land. They traded for Odell Beckham to get this team to the promised land. They took Miles Garrett over Pat Mahomes and Deshaun Watson to be the guy to take them to the promised land. They traded the number two pick in 20, uh, what was it, 16. To They traded the pick that they could have taken Carson Wentz with to get to the promised land. And they 
really did pick Baker Mayfield to be their guy, and he's really going to have to step up. It's going to be a little bit hard to do it in a very tough division in the AFC North. I think that's the other element we have to throw in here. I'm very high on the Pittsburgh Steelers. I think they do have one of the one of the better defensive units in all of the National Football League. Obviously, you have Baltimore, who was the best team in the AFC during the regular season last year, and Baker's really going to have to step up. We've seen that he could do it before, um, but with a new head coach and a new offensive line, I think the excuses are there. And if Baker Mayfield performs how he did in 2020, in 2019, in 2020, then I think the Cleveland Browns are in big trouble. And maybe, can I see them blowing it up? I don't know, but let's just say Baker Mayfield isn't very good this season and Kevin Stefanski doesn't really like him as his quarterback. It's a new GM. It's a new quarterback that drafted Baker Mayfield. We see this issue become apparent all the time throughout the National Football League. And, um, you know, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. If Barry, who is on... Um, the Chiefs staff when they drafted Baker Mayfield, but he wasn't really the one that made the pick and the Brown staff, excuse me, I don't know why I said the Chiefs, but um, he was on uh, Dorsey's staff when the Browns selected Baker Mayfield, but he wasn't the guy that selected Baker Mayfield. So if Andrew Berry, the Browns GM, is like, all right, Baker's not my quarterback, you know, I think we need to make a change, I could definitely see him do that next season. But at the same time, the talent is there for the Cleveland Browns. Baker, Chubb, Odell, Landry, Njoku, Hooper, an improved offensive line, names on on defense that should be able to get the job done. And uh, I'm very curious to see how Cleveland really looks next season because Kevin Stefanski, the, fir the first year head coach, excuse me, has a lot of pressure he's going to have to deal with. He has talent. And in a tough division, it's going to be interesting to see what exactly the Browns do.